All right, let's talk about the main gear. So uh, first of all, uh, the gear channel, I did end up painting the gear channel as well as the landing gear itself because I felt like um, it's probably gonna be a while until we actually get to that part. I mean, it's just gonna be, it's gonna be where it is for a while. So I wanted some extra corrosion protection and also nobody's really gonna see the gear channel. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't care. I think it looks pretty good though. It's actually a pretty nice gray color. Anyway, that's what I did. Well, that's the way it goes. So one of the big things about the gear channel, I mean about the landing gear itself is uh, you'll, you'll see it has cutouts for the landing gear strut like fittings, the, like the weldments for the, uh, the, the, like the, where, the, where the landing gear actually attaches, so where it bolts onto. So those, those steel threaded bolts, there are cutouts in the landing gear for those. But, and I think this is just because of how ours turned out, uh, the I think it was it was only the right hand forward cutout uh, needed to be widened quite a bit. Uh, so it, the something about the way that we constructed the the uh, weldment, the way that it sat in there, it just isn't quite perfectly straight as it needs to be, or or as uh, as aligned as it needs to be so that it would just fit into those cutouts. So I did have to make a few changes to the cutouts and file that down and stuff. Um, so that took some extra time, that was annoying, but I think that was just something because of how all the metal parts came together um, that we just needed to make those adjustments so that it would actually fit. Uh, the landing gear goes between these bolt thingies right here and <clears throat> these cutouts which it came like this, are supposed to fit right between here. But uh, for some reason, you know, just the way it turned out, these, um, these, I'm not sure if it's the angle or the actual just distance, but these are out, these bolts are, are out a little bit too, too far. So basically the, the distance between these bolts here and those bolts or studs or whatever right there um, is a little bit more than what was milled out here. So what I had to do was file this a few more millimeters so that this is actually wider than the original. This is the original right there on that side and then this one I had to widen by, I don't know, five millimeters maybe? Maybe five millimeters. Uh, to get it to fit this back stud. But it seems to fit pretty well, so we're gonna we're about to mount that. The other thing that was actually surprisingly hard was cutting out those little rubber pads, little rubber pads, little orange things, kind of orange, yeah, the little orange rubber pads uh, that go between the landing gear and the landing gear uh, weldment at attachment steel fittings, um, because it's this weird consistency. It's like it's like a like a carrot almost, like it's it's flexible, but it's very, very hard. So what I found worked well actually to cut that was a chisel. So I, I used like some woodworking chisel thingies or maybe it's a gouge. I don't know what the correct term is for this tool, but it worked pretty well. And I basically just hammered it down and cut through the thing instead of trying to use like uh, snips or uh, an X-Acto knife or, or drilling through it or anything like that. So it worked out pretty well. I think I might've messed up the left hand the top left hand one just a little bit, but I think it will hold and be okay, but if I need to change it, I will. I also did have a little bit of trouble with the holes in the L angle, uh, for the, the L angles that hold the gear onto the gear fitting. So 
it's just kind of tricky to get those to actually like the, the holes just right. So just be sure to keep that in mind. So I, what I had to do was I actually had to widen the holes a little bit because when it was all said and done, when I was trying to get it on the on, on there for the final time, it just didn't fit quite right. So I had to make a few adjustments to those holes. So they ended up being maybe not the most perfect holes, but they fit and they work. By far, one of the one of the biggest things, once we actually got the landing gear attached to the airplane, the fun was not over yet because I had to get the, the wheel assemblies, well, the, the brake, the axle wheel and brake assemblies attached to each other and to the airplane. So that was all good. The holes fit pretty well. I think on one side, it might've been a little bit of a tighter fit for the axle, the actual axle bolt holes. Um, or the actual axle bolts, but it fit pretty much just fine. You know, you just gotta wiggle, jiggle it. Remember, minute jiggles. That is the secret to making anything work. And what I ha uh, what I realized was that in order to actually get the brake assembly to fit onto the landing gear, what I had to do was cut out like a little notch, like a little angle off the backside of the landing gear. Um, and it was eh, kind of a lot, not a ton, but a, a significant amount. And the reason is, uh, well, for two things. One thing is just so that you can, so that the brake, um, uh, pat, the brake like, housing has enough room to move freely. And then the other thing is if you want to remove your brake pads, like you can't, you can't do it unless you make that notch to cut, unless you cut out that notch in the landing gear so that you can actually slide it off the landing gear. Otherwise it just, it's, it's stuck there. So. Yeah, so I had to do that, and this is with the with the Matco brake assembly that we have. I can't remember the name, of the model number right now. Also, if you want to see a, a video of how I actually assembled the the wheels, the main wheels, and the and putting the tires on and stuff, um, I have a video out on that. I didn't do it for the for the nose wheel because I didn't really have a problem with it, so it was a lot simpler. Real quick, I just want to show I installed the axle right here and what I did is I uh, just rotated it so that the brake you know uh, di brake the brake disc the actual braking assembly is on the trailing side because that's what it said to do in the manual and I got two bolts from the finishing the Zenith finishing kit and these are uh, AN uh, 4-15 alpha as it says right there and but it's kind of weird because these two bolts came with the matco thing which is nice because they're captured by this plate here so i'd have to take this plate off to get to those bolts but they, those are already there but they didn't come with like nuts or anything which is kind of weird um they were a little bit long so i just put two washers there to make sure i wouldn't bottom out the nut and then i torqued them to 60 inch pounds and they're good to go, I think. And then uh, I kind of just got lucky on this one, but uh, this is the inlet right here. And then right here, you've got the, the bleeder uh, nipple thingy. And, uh, <coughs> and so that's how you service the brakes. And what else? I think that's it. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna pack the bearings and then uh, I'm gonna install that wheel. And, uh, I think it's gonna be awesome. All right, so it turns out that unfortunately, um, I'm gonna to have to ground down or you know file down this little corner of the landing gear because this uh, the, the the brake is hitting it, so it's not able to move as much as it needs to because the I, I fitted the wheel on there and it just gets too tight before the wheel is actually tight on the axle. So that needs more movement, and I don't think I can rotate it at all. I think that's the best spot for it where it is. Um, so I'm just going to need to grind down this a little bit, like take off a little chunk right there. That's a bummer, but, well, yeah, it's a bummer, but, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah. Oh, and another thing about the actual brake assembly, the little, uh, guide rods that it slides on, on one side, it was really stiff, and I was like, it's just, it wasn't fitting. I was wondering what was going on, but it turns out that what it was was actually, um, the guide rods have like a little bit of play in them. And so what you need to do is loosen the screw or the, I guess the bolt that is holding the guide rods on or the guide, the guide rod sleeve that's holding the guide rod sleeve tight. 
and then just loosen it a little bit and then put it into the uh, put it into the like the guide the guide rod holes so then you can center it and then tighten it down so uh, you can see there um, that I, I did just that and it fixed the problem so aside from those from those uh, little kind of hang-ups and, and things we weren't expecting we got the landing gear on well uh, it's where it looks great and uh, we actually I'm using um, I'm just using like a 2x4 as a tail stand right now to make sure that it stays up until I can get that uh, engine mount and engine on there which that's a whole other thing uh, for sure but I'll be getting back into that and working on it because lately we've just been so busy you haven't had any time to really do much on the airplane in fact I got the landing gear on like a while ago and it's just been some time until I've actually been able to sit down and tell you about it and and then put together the video and get it out to you. Well, hey, I think that's it. If I think of anything else, I'll try to put it in the description of this video or just in the next video that I come out with. Um, let's see, of course, well, we got the, so we got the landing gear on. We still need to do a few other things. Well, like, well, eventually we'll need to hook up, you know, the brake lines because th those are helpful for actually making the brakes work. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, you can let me know. Or if you have uh, legitimate good questions, leave them in the comments below. And I don't know if I'm going to get to actually answering them. I'll try to answer them, though. And also what I'm going to try to do is have more sort of more regular videos um, just of kind of what's going on, sort of not quite a vlog format, but not exactly specific item videos because it's just kind of too much to keep track of because a lot of times we'll be kind of we might be working on different stuff at once and then if i do that then i'll have to like take the video and then store the video somewhere and then remember the video and then find out when to put a whole video together and it's just it's just too much again with the whole balancing between filming it and actually doing it so uh, i'm going to be more doing it and remember the only way to do a thing is to do it. I'll see you next time.